hallmarks of African liberation is to bring speakers from different disciplines, different subjects, different topics to address the liberation struggles through the spoken word, through music, through academia knowledge. And this afternoon, we are going to hear from another of a speaker who's going to bring us closer to Mother Earth. Many of us would have had some experience in hearing about how some of the herbal remedies have become billion dollars industries day. Many of us would have even attempted to use the alternative medicine. This afternoon, our next speaker, Sister Maureen Minto, is no one who is not qualified to speak on this topic. She will share with us around the theme of Africa place in the world now. And she will also share with us her experience, her thoughts, her struggle along in getting us to know more and appreciate the use of the herbal remedies. Give it for her sister Minta. to the family. What words of healing can I offer to our family? Well, indeed it is a grand union. Africans from all over. Africans first to leave, and I guess the last to be <laughs> What do we need? We are sure they will not fool us all the time. And so I have taken the time today to 
two emperors. But before I do that, for those of us whose minds have been poisoned, with religion, I am going to take a few minutes to clear the air because we'll be talking about voodoo, necromancy, tools that our ancestors have used to free us as a people. But because many of us have been mentally enslaved in Christianity, as I was, Muslims, Islams, I see the hands of different people, just stand and say we're in Africa. If you have never heard the name of where in Africa you are from, just stand and say we're, as we start with this man, we are saluting all of the African continent. Anybody from Uganda, Congo, I know I know we have, we have representatives from Papua New Guinea. Come on, Nigeria, Ghana. Come on, Saddam, say, just say the names. Nigeria. Let me teach you something. Well, you see, I tend to not like to use the word teach because I'm not really at it, but let me just remind you of something about the power of words. Words give life. When you keep silent, when you refuse to release your own energy and the energy of your people, it is as if by your silence you have shut them up. You have kept them into the prison and you have allowed others to triumph over you. So again, as we resurrect the spirits, of our ancestors, the spirits of all those who are still alive and those who will come. Come on, where in Africa are you from? And the raising of the left hand is judgment. And it is what we are bringing today. We are the righteous rulers of this world. And we shall take our power and we shall judge again rightly. Don't ever be afraid to raise it. Our ancestors were no idiots. I went to Ethiopia last week. See, like a brother on a journey, boy, I tell you, I need to understand my people. I looked into what it cost me to actually go to Ethiopia last week, and they could actually buy me a house in Jamaica and probably buy me two houses in Africa. But it's a journey that we must take. We must sacrifice sometimes in order to get the level of knowledge that we need to unite us as a people, we must take that journey. Because as the brother says, they are enslaving people in Papua New Guinea. Is there anybody here that doubts that our origin is in Ethiopia? Is there anybody here? Let me see the hands of all those who agree that our origin is in Ethiopia. Well, I believe it. It is said that that's where the oldest, but man must have started somewhere. The seed must have started somewhere. So the African continent it, is it. One of the reasons why I ask that question, you see, is because we might hear of Papua New Guinea and it is not on the continent. And we might say it is not Africa. We hear of the American Indians in America, and we say they are not on the continent and they are not Africa. And we hear of the Arawak Indians in the Caribbean that were killed, and we say they were not Africa, even though they were all dark skinned. And we say the Ethiopians, no, and I'm not talking about the Arabs who came in and took over 
credence and say I'm talking about the Kushites who every year at least 10,000 10,000 of them are, are kidnapped and sold sold to Jews who believe that if they take a 12 year old black Kushite Jew or the Palasha Jew, the black people of Ethiopia, the original people of Ethiopia and if they take that 12 year old girl and have sexual intercourse with this 12 year old girl it is okay no it is not breaking a law it's pretty much like what they do to persons in the UK into America if a white man kills a black man so be it if a black man kills another black man well it's a crime it's a punishable crime but if a black man kills a white man that's what heresy off with his head so in different parts of the world as a people we are being made to suffer they have done well they have separated us well and our separation has weakened us for a time it has wounded us for a time but as we learn and understand the purpose and the agenda I give thanks that in a room as beautifully adorned as these Africans from all over from the continent from the Americas, from Europe from the Caribbean can unite again with one cause what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? We have waited long. We have lost many, many in the battle to achieve it. But I give thanks we have not lost hope. What do you want? You know, as a healer, for me, it's, I weep every day, every day. And I am one who carries my pain and my hurt in my belly bottom every day. I work tirelessly day and night. I travel anywhere in the world I am called to rescue a black person from the clutches of death. Day or night. As weak as I am with food, without food, I travel because I know what I want. Freedom. Freedom.